In this video, I solved problem 4.1.3, a bond problem. We're going to be finding the price of what you have to pay for a bond that's got coupons, like most bonds do. This bond happens to be equivalent to another bond that's sort of atypical. It's a zero coupon bond where you only get your redemption value at the end when it matures. In the problem statement, the very first sentence is just a description of what a zero coupon bond is. A zero coupon bond pays no coupons. Pretty simple. It only pays the redemption amount at the time the bond matures. Greta has two options. She can buy, first of all, a zero coupon bond that will pay $10,000 at the end of 10 years and is currently selling for $5,083.49. Her second option is what she chooses. Instead, she does purchase a 10% bond with coupons payable that will pay $10,000 at the end of 10 years. Now, it doesn't say that the coupons are semi-annual, but remember I said in the last couple of videos when it doesn't say you assume that they're semi-annual coupons, they're payable twice a year, so every six months. That is the assumption here. If she pays X for the second bond, she's going to earn the same if annual effective interest rate as the zero coupon bond. Calculate X. All right, let's start by figuring out what that same effective annual interest rate is. With the first bond, you, you know, effectively you are just investing 5,083.49, that's its price. At time zero, it needs to accumulate to 10,000 after 10 years, and I is the annual effective interest rate, so this has to equal 10,000. And we can now solve that equation for I. Take 10,000, divide by 5,083.49. One plus I to the 10th equals this. I should raise both sides to the 1 10th power, 0.1 to get this and subtract 1 to get i. i is very, very close to 7%. Let's go ahead and round it to 7%. All right, now remember again, just like I said a minute ago, unless stated otherwise, you assume that the coupons are semi-annual and your yield rate per period would be per six months in this case. J is going to be the semi-annual effective semi-annual yield rate for the bond with coupons. Um, to have an effective annual interest rate of I equals 7%, it would have to be the case that 1 plus J squared would be 1 plus I would be 1.07. Let's solve this equation for J to find our semi-annual yield rate for the coupon bond. So take 1.07 and raise it to the one half power, take the square root, and subtract one. J is about 0 0.0344. The um, answer key that you can buy online or on anywhere you, you can find it uh, goes ahead and rounds J to this much. I'm gonna go ahead and carry more decimals. It does affect the answer by a few dollars to do this. Uh, but just keep in mind that oftentimes, the, you know, on, on a multiple choice exam, you're going to have one answer that's definitely closest to whatever answer you get, even if you round 0 0.0344, like they do in the solutions manual. All right, uh, so now let's think about the bond she does buy. J is the semi-annual yield rate for the bond she does buy. But let's think about the actual payments now, the coupons in particular. It's a 10-year bond with semi-annual payments of coupons, so you're going to have 20 periods that are all half years. The coupons are going to be, uh, evidently the face amount is 10,000, even though they don't say it's a face amount. Uh, that would have to be what it is based on the information that we're given. It is a 10% bond. That would be um, the percentage that you would take and divide by two to help you figure out the uh, semi-annual interest that you get for the coupons. 5%. 10% divided by 2 would be 5%. 5% 5 of 10,000 is 500. The amount of your coupons is going to be five, that 500. Excuse me. That's Greta's amount of her coupons. And then she's going to get 10,000 at the end. So now it's just a matter of calculating the present value of this payment stream. That will be the value x that we want. So x is going to be 500 
A20 at what interest rate? At this one. I'll go ahead and just write J there. Plus 10,000 V sub J to the 20th. Now it's just a matter of calculating this. I'm going to store this in register 0. Let's calculate this first and we'll store it in register 1. So I need to add 1 to it, take the reciprocal, raise it to the 20th power, subtract from 1, we do this calculation over and over again, divide by j, which is in register 0, multiply by 500. This value is about 7144. I'm going to store that in register 1. Now let's find this one. j again is in register 0, add 1 to it, reciprocal, 20th power, times 10,000, add that to what's in register 1, and if you use as many decimals as I have here for J, you get X to be 12,227.91. If you end up rounding J to 0 0.0344 like they do in the solutions manual, you get closer to 12,229, so it does make at least a dollar or two of difference depending on how you round J.